Hey, everybody. Welcome to another edition of Slightly Warped. That's right. If you haven't been keeping up, we got a new name. Same great podcast, slightly crazier, but that's why we call it Slightly Warped. I'm Rick, and as usual, I'm joined by my man Ryan, a.k.a. Big Show. How you doing today, Show. Kyle? I'm good, brother. How are you? I can't complain either. Um, you know, it's... Uh, it's already Tuesday, even though today felt like a Monday. I am just glad that tomorrow's the halfway point, you know, get through the work week and kind of enjoy the weekend again. Yep, it's going to be a little bit of an extended one because the fourth is on Monday. So looking forward That's to right. an extra day of just chillaxing. Man, won't Might that be Might spend nice. an extra day at the lake fishing. I'm probably going to be in watching TV, which is kind of yep. what I did last weekend. Did you uh, get a chance to watch all six episodes of Obi-Wan Kenobi? I did. I finished it up yesterday. And before I give my thoughts, what did you think about it? Overall, the overall series, I'm going to give a 10 out of 10. I really enjoyed it. I love how, um, what's the guy's name? Farvaro, is that his last name? Oh, that, John Favreau? Uh, yeah. He, you know, how they're kind of fixing the 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 voided parts of the system uh, or of the series itself. Um, you know, I could have dealt without the third sister or at least have somebody else in there as that person. I mean, overall, she wasn't bad. Um you but didn't I, like her? You know, you know I, I she didn't make or break the show. I mean, it could have been any protagonist to deal with that part of it, and it would have been fine with me if they replaced her. I didn't like her. I didn't dislike her. It was, eh, you know. I'm I, not going to lose. I, I'm not going to think about her her acting performance out of those six episodes at all. I I feel similar, knowing though, if you look at all six episodes all together, it does sort of explain her acting in it if you watch it all together because i've seen her in other stuff and she's a much better actress than uh she lets on in the series uh she yeah could have really no toned it down show. i think she could have toned it down at the beginning but i see what where, where they were trying to go with it she's very high yeah, most definitely yes the only show i've seen that actress play in is uh the queen's gambit is the only other show that i've seen her in so that's where i recognized her from but yeah. I love the the storyline between Anakin, Darth, and, and Obi Wan. I really enjoyed that. I don't think they could have casted a better Princess Leia. I think that little girl yes. wrapped that character up, you know, perfectly to a T. Carrie Fisher was smiling from heaven, you know. I just by watching that, I know. Um, I liked it, man. Um, I. I I can't say enough. It was it was a great series. I liked it. I liked it as well. Um, and I and I one thing I want to point out: there's a lot of naysayers, people saying, "Well, this doesn't fit canon. This doesn't do that." If you watch it as a whole, you know, don't just go by the episode you see. Wait till it's done. Because the three problems they had with it were: she's going to ruin Obi Wan watching over Anakin. She did not. They said the Inquisitor's not supposed to be dead. He is not. And um, the major thing was, oh, Darth Vader shouldn't fight Obi-Wan again. Why not? They never said that they only met once. Right. And, and this actually puts a lot more weight on him because he schooled him again. So when you finally get to Star Wars and he said, when I left you, I was a learner. Now I'm the master. Well, now we it know. It all makes sense. And the cold lines that they put in, you know, when Dar told him, you didn't kill Anakin, I did, you know, uh, that was, I was just like, yes, that was like perfect. And that but works I also, out in Return of the Jedi when he tells Luke, uh, no, in the uh, first movie, when he tells Luke, hey, Darth Vader murdered your, dad. your father. Yeah. Yes, so. it all worked out. And I also really liked... Uh, how like if you read the books the star wars books the one there was one that's strictly about dark vader right after 
um, Revenge of the Sith and how clumsily, how he had to change the way he fought with his lightsaber because of all the mechanicals. Mm. He was more of a powerhouse versus a, a, you know, a fast mover like he was at the when he was Anakin at the end of Revenge of the Sith. I really enjoyed the way those lightsaber duels played out because you could see that he was just more brute strength versus the fluidity of Obi-Wan, you know, and him in the first fight. Now, one thing I want to point out before we go to the next subject, I'd loved the way they made Darth Vader so powerful in this. They, they finally showed him powerful, you know. He's always been menacing, and everybody's always alluded to how powerful he was, but this series showed it, especially when Reva fought him. Oh, yeah. She had yeah. the lightsaber. He didn't even yes. pick his up, and he still took her to school. Yes. What, you know, and, and this isn't the height of Vader's strength either. No. He's just coming into his power as a Sith Lord in this. So, I mean, I could see a spinoff where they could do nothing but Darth Vader stuff, you know, I, which I hope they do. So, yeah. You never know. Um, it was phenomenal. Hayden Christensen is rumored to be in the Ahsoka show. However, since that takes place after Return of the Jedi, it would probably only be Force Ghost Anakin. Um, why unless there's it, flashbacks, Ahsoka shouldn't be coming after Return of the Jedi. Yeah, because remember Cause she's she, in she's in the Mandalorian, so she's still alive um, at that time. Oh, okay. Yeah, I see yeah. what you're saying. Yeah, but they could they could do a period piece where it's in between Revenge of the Sith and Obi Wan. I thought that they would, but. Um, one of the uh, other women that are uh, going to be in the show with her, I believe, is um, one of the uh, bounty hunters that played in The Mandalorian as well. So I think that they are they are going forward, and I believe they are on some kind of mission looking for somebody or another. So interesting. I, I mean, we got a long do time to wait on with, that. Hopefully, they'll do some more with Luke Skywalker too. Yeah, that would be cool. I think next up for the Star Wars uh, series is uh, Andor. It's coming in August, I believe. So awesome. we're going to see what happened right up to uh, the events of uh, Rogue One. And from what I understand, I believe it is just two or three seasons, and that's it. So they're going one or two years, and then it, bang, starts right up to where Rogue One starts. So, oh, okay. That'll be pretty interesting. I would love to see them do a, a Knights of the Old Republic series. Rumored? That there was some stuff that was rumored, but uh, the only movie that uh, they've got slated right now is the one that's going to be uh, done by Taika Waititi. And he's busy doing his tour right now for uh, Thor um, Love and Thunder. So who knows when he'll even get to uh, finish writing the script. Is it going to be live action or animation? Yes, it will be live action. Excellent. Now, the only thing he said was all new characters. He's not going to have people that we already know. He wants to open up the universe. So I'm good with that. Uh, see, but I, I want to see stuff with Darth Raven and Malgus and all them guys. I want to see that. Well, yeah, I want to see a Darth Bane series. You know, that'd be awesome. Uh, that would be i mean anything can happen i just say this in closing let it be led by either watiti john favreau or um um who's the other guy that helped do the mandalorian i know uh, who you're talking about but i do not i don't have his name at the top of my list i i don't want kathleen turner to put her no. hands on it i say kathleen at turner. all kathleen kennedy yeah, I know who you meant. Yeah. Kathleen, anybody named Kathleen can't mess with it. <laughs> All right. Now, while we're on the subject of actors and actresses, I got a list of uh, actors and actresses. I'm just going to throw their names out, and I want to see if uh, actors, actresses, and singers. I want to see if you can guess who they are. I'm going to give you their real name, and you give me their stage name. We're uh -oh. going to start with Ramon. 
Estevez. No idea. I'll give you a hint. He has a son, has two sons, one named Charlie and one named Emilio. Hmm. Well, I know Emilio Estevez, but I don't know his dad's name then. Charlie Sheen. Oh, Charlie Sheen was the other brother, but Martin Sheen is the dad. Martin, Martin Sheen is the name okay. we're looking for. His real name is Raymond Estevez? Yes. Only I Emilio kept that. his real name. And Charlie's last name is Estevez? Yes, it is. I did not know but that. But he took his dad's stage name instead. Wow. I did not know that. Yeah. Um, this one is kind of a dead giveaway because her real name is Tandui Newton. Olivia Newton-John? No. <laughs> Tandy Newton. Don't, I don't even know who she is. Whoa, you don't know Tandy? Have you ever watched that HBO show? Um, what is it with the um, uh, Westworld? Uh-huh. Which ever one that? is she? She's the black chick. Light skin. The prostitute? Yes. That, that got out of the system? Yes. Okay. Okay. Yeah. I know the face, but I never knew her name. Yeah. It, it's Tandy Newton. Used to be Tandy Newton because it was an error. Uh, she was miscredited in a movie back in 1991 and it stuck and she finally got around to uh, spelling it right with the I-W-E at the end instead of the I-E. Um, gotcha. it, just like uh, a lot of people, you're not the only one that seen her in many things, but hell, didn't know her name. I remember from way back in uh, the second Mission Impossible movie. Because she was the uh, chick yep, that had the I mean, uh, virus. She was in, uh, she was in uh, the movie with Will Smith as the mom, uh, Pursuit of Happiness. She was mm. in that one. Yeah. She's been in uh, a lot of stuff. Yeah. Know her face, didn't know her name. Yeah. Next up is uh, Annie Hathaway, also another dead giveaway. Anne Hathaway? Yeah. She said that she never went by Anne until she got her SAG card. And she regrets it. <clears throat> and, you know, as, as familiar as I am with music and movies and stuff, I had to dig deep to find out why that is. I guess when you're in the entertainment business and you apply for your SAG card, Screen Actors Guild, mm -hmm. um, if somebody already has that name, you cannot use it. Really? Yes. So if you ever wanted to act in a movie and there's already a Ryan Pulley, they will tell you, you cannot apply for your card unless you put a different name on there. Wow. And from that point forward, that's the credit you will be under. Big show Pulley. Now, there you go. Already ready. <laughs> and um, for obvious reasons, you can't just say big show. Because I believe right. the wrestler has been in a movie. Therefore, I'm sure that's taken. But he is the big show. <laughs> Good point. <laughs> All right. Next up. Um, this actor was born David Law when he enrolled in a London-based youth theater. And he used his middle name instead of David. Jude? Yes. Good one. Look at that show. You're making the comeback. Uh-oh. All right. Let's see if I got any others here. I do. I've got uh, three more. I'm going to give you the easy one first. The Rock. This... <laughs> no. <laughs> we, we know who Dwayne Johnson is. <laughs> this actress got her SAG card when she was 16. Here's another SAG issue. Um, she requested the name Riley Stone. However, she wanted to change it back because Emily is what she goes by. It was taken, so she had to take another name. Sharon Stone. Nope. Emma Stone. Uh, Emma Stone. Yeah. Gotcha. All right, two more. Jermaine Cole is a rapper. True. 
<laughs> J. Cole. Okay. That one I've that was pretty him. simple. He just, just dropped the full just name. Just did the initial. Yeah. And I can see that better than just giving yourself a whole new first name. Right. And finally, this American badass singer, his legal name is Robert Ritchie. And he changed it because he thought it would be the worst name in the world. Lionel? No. And, and his stage name has nothing to do with Robert Ritchie at all. Huh. Give me a hint. Well, it won't work out too well when he's in his 70s. <laughs> Kid Rock. Kid Rock. There you go. All right. We had a little bit of fun. Let's get to some seriousness real quick. I need to bring everybody down. We got some bad news announced from the United States Postal Service, and it will start August 1st. They said that, uh, actually, I'm going to back it up. Before that August 1st thing starts, they're saying in July, which is just a few days around the corner, we will experience a price hike for first class mail which will be upped by 6.5%. So they're also warning Americans to be prepared for continually rising uh, fees over the next few years. What else is new with the Postal Service now? Now, because of this, they're saying that uh, the United States Postal Service is upping their standards and their current standards will be shipped, will be shifted, excuse me, from two to eight days going to two to five days for packages to be delivered. So I guess we're supposed to be excited in August because our packages will be delivered two to three days sooner. And that's supposed to make us feel good. So it'll take the sting out of the fact that a month before that postal rates are going up. So yeah. don't know how many uh, letters you send out every month. But it's going to cost you more now. Hardly any, especially first class. Um, but I can see that with the price of fuel. I, I can see that. I can see them up in their prices and things like that. Makes total sense. Yeah. I just hated the fact that it said it will continue to increase over the next few years. Because that lets me know that it's more than a fuel thing. It's like, a, hey, we're just going to. Get a little hey, off the unless top they know something some we more. don't, and this fuel's just going to keep on rising. That could be. Although I saw we're some all going to be skinny because everybody's going to be walking around. That that might not be a bad thing. There you go. We'll, we'll be a fitter nation for it. All right. Um, <clears throat> once we uh, stop using all that gas, we'll have more money to go to McDonald's. But here's the problem. <laughs> McDonald's has changing the way people go to drive throughs Now, before everybody's like, I just went to McDonald's, I didn't see anything different. This has only been tested at 24 McDonald's in the uh, Chicago area. So if you live in Chicago, Illinois, you know what we're talking about here. <clears throat> Everybody else, here's what's about to go down. They're testing a new AI-based technology that would cut workers out of the order taking. So if you go through a drive through eventually it's going to be a robot that takes your order. And they said the system needs to improve in accuracy. Currently it's 80% and it has to be in the 95 plus range in order for them to roll out this thing to all their uh, McDonald's nationwide. Uh, the accuracy is the main thing that they need to happen. Now, McDonald's also chimed in and said that it's going to be a while before this happens because there's so many McDonald's around the world. You, you can't go from 10 restaurants in Chicago to 14,000 across the United States. So even so though basically we're going to be talking to like Siri or Alexa <laughs> at the, uh, the drive-thru window. Yeah, it's, it's going to be creepy because you're going to be pulling up, getting ready for your Big Mac. 
Hello, Ryan. May I take your order? They're going to know my name, too? That's going to be messed up. Hey, it's all about, happens, what it, it's all about whatever chip is in your phone and if it's if that, compatible. If that happens, I'm going to Wendy's. Okay, I'm glad you said Wendy's because the uh, last thing I'm going to touch on on this, this technology is not new. Chili's restaurant last year had introduced robots to run food and bus tables. And uh, this year, Domino's and Chick-fil-A began testing autonomous delivery vehicles in their locations in Texas. So it's spreading. Wow. Yeah, so uh, I'm just going to say this and then I'm going to go to the next system. Cyberdyne. <laughs> I was just thinking that. Skynet is self aware. <laughs> right. All right. Let's have some more fun, though. I was watching this little YouTube thing. It's uh, about 12 minutes. And it's the stupidest things that MJ, that would be Michael Jordan, has spent his money on. And apparently, dude's got money to blow. Because oh, yeah. they named 10 things. And I'll go through them here real quick. Cigars. Now, that's several thousand dollars a year. That's chump change to him. So that's probably why that was number 10. But it gets better. At number nine, his car collection. Dude has a sick car collection. The Corvettes alone rival anything that most people have. And he's got a couple Porsches, a couple Ferraris. And then uh, a car made by Bugatti that there's only like a handful of them made in the world. First of all, I didn't even realize they made cars. I thought they were just strictly motorcycles. Um, I guess he got so sick of golfing at country clubs, he built his own Grove 23 Golf Co Club. And it is so exclusive that it's by invitation only that you wow. can get in. Um, he has four medical facilities. So he wanted to give back to the community in North Carolina. So he built four medical facilities where people can get health care. I like that, by the way. So, you know, it might be frivolous spending, but it helps people. So I'm totally good with that. And we yeah. go from helping people to helping himself. Bro <laughs> has a Gulfstream G550 jet. And it's his own. Had it painted with the uh, <clears throat> Air Jordan logo on it. Nice. <clears throat> Excuse me. He also has a 56,000 square foot mega mansion. It was valued at $29 million. Wow. Now, that's got to be some crib there. And uh, he's got four more smaller mansions in Utah, Florida, and North Carolina, if you want to call, <laughs> if you can use the word small and mansion in the same sentence. Right. Um, here's the kicker, though. When he wants to be on the water, he has an 80-foot fishing boat. <clears throat> oh, wait now. Wait for it. Wait for it. <clears throat> he doesn't use that boat because he's got a 230-foot super yacht. And that yacht comes complete with a rescue boat and a speed boat. And his boats all combined are about $88 million. Wow. Oh, I'm sure he uses that fishing boat. <laughs> yeah. Um, back to charity, though. He gives to several different charities. And one thing I found out that I really thought was cool in his video, he's given over $100 million to charity since he came into the NBA. And if you think about that and they averaged it up, that is $6.3 million more than he made in his entire career in the NBA. Yeah. Which means the Bulls got off easy. They didn't pay him a whole lot of money. Right. Get all them endorsements. Yeah. So Gatorade and Nike is, is the one giving them charities. And yeah. uh, his biz biggest expenditure he spent uh, $175 million when he decided to purchase the Charlotte Hornets, a.k.a. the Charlotte Bobcats now. Now, dude turned to profit because the $175 million Charlotte Bobcats is now worth 
$1.5 billion. Wow. So it's not like MJ's hurting for money. Oh, heck no. I want to be like Mike. <laughs> yeah, if, if man, just give me one of them bets, Mike. Just, just a bet. I don't, I don't need anything else. Drive it once a week, once a year. I'll, I'll put gas in the tank and wash it for you. Just, you know, let me, you know. <laughs> Look, I'll take the 80-foot fishing boat. Give me the speedboat from the next to the yacht. I'll take the speedboat. <laughs> nah, I want the fishing boat. Either way. So the fishing boats move pretty quick. <laughs> uh, that's true. So check it out. I'm going to close with uh, some useless information because, you know, I'm on BuzzFeed. What the heck? It's there. And they had some things that were ridiculous myths that we learned as kids that are totally not true. And a couple of them I had heard before. And now I know they're not true. Now, the first one I already knew wasn't true. Uh, remember when people said that there are different zones on your tongue? One part can get uh, taste bitter. One part can taste sour, sweet, and then salty. That's not true. Any part of your tongue can detect any of those flavors. That's just the way it is. Um, I don't know if people ever fell for that. I didn't because, you know, the first thing I'm going to do when I heard it was I put some damn salt on my tongue on different parts and I was just fine. So I knew eh, they lied. Um, but moving on, and this one's interesting. <clears throat> cracking your knuckles gives you arthritis. I thought that for the longest time. And, you know, I'd catch myself popping my knuckles and I'm like, um, I better stop. You know, <laughs> once I heard that, though, I'm like, all right, I'm good now. I'm <laughs> uh, touching a baby bird will make its parents reject it. I grew up thinking that, too. <clears throat> but that one's not true. Here's the one that I thought was true, too. We only use 10% of our brains. Um, not true. We use much, much more than that. We don't use our brains to the fullest capacity, no. But we use more than 10%. Some of us. Yeah, some yeah. of us. Good, good. <laughs> All right. Blood in your veins is blue, and then it's red in, when it hits the arteries. That is a myth. Your blood is red no matter what. Now, you know, some people, because of the lighting and the skin and all that, if you see their veins, their veins look a little bluish or a little greenish. That, that has to do with skin, your organs, and, and the blood underneath. But the blood is still red. We guarantee it. Um, and I'd also heard the myth that your blood is blue until it hits the air. And if that's the case... When somebody's getting an IV, or not an IV, but uh, when they're having blood drawn, wouldn't it come out blue? Because it's still in the tube. It's not hitting the air. But Depends if it's been oxygenated yet. See? You know more about that than me. <clears throat> oh, here's another good one. It takes seven years to digest gum. If you've accidentally swallowed your gum, you're okay. It's not going to take that long. And I kind of knew that that one was... A myth too because i had heard through several sources that our stomach acid is some of the most potent and power powerful acid around so i'm pretty sure it can take down a little bit of gum so you don't have to worry about that um i'm not condoning people swallowing gum so y'all kids choke after you watch this podcast it wasn't me it right wasn't me there is a disclaimer <laughs> yes uh, here's, here's, here's the one shaving makes your hair grow back thicker. No, it don't. And here's the proof. Ricky's a little thin on top and I keep my head shaved. So it should always be growing back thicker. I should have a lush, beautiful Afro, but I don't <laughs> myth busted. <clears throat> All right. Another one. Wet hair causes a cold. You won't catch a cold with wet hair. You won't. You'll probably get split ends. 
but that's the extent of it. This yeah, one cold is viral, isn't it? Yes. Yeah. People just would probably get sick because they're walking around with soaking wet hair, but that's that's their own damn fault. Right. You swallow eight spiders a year. No, I don't. No, I don't. First of all, better not be no spiders in this house. That's a whole nother thing. It damn sure ain't going in my mouth. Ew. I don't even want to think about that. <clears throat> you lose 90% of your body heat through your head. Well, that's a myth. You will lose some body heat if you're walking around in the cold without a hat on. And that's because everything else is covered up. All things considered, if you went outside completely naked, you'd lose body heat from every part that's exposed. <clears throat> so that just makes sense. I haven't heard that percentage, but I heard you lose the majority of your heat out of your head in cold that's weather. That's because, because the rest of your body's got on a coat and gloves. So <clears throat> that, that's why it's a myth. Wherever heat can escape, it's going to escape. And, you know, same as if you, you got a coat on, a hat, but no gloves. Hands are going to get cold because that heat's leaving the hands. So it, it, it's just going to depend. And then here's the fun one. I, st I, I think that's not necessarily busted, that, that myth. I, I don't think that's completely accurate, but I'm going to do some research. Now, because I don't like the cold, I'm going to let you do that research. Right. Well, because I know, like, <laughs> if it's in your hands... The reason why your hands get cold is because the blood pulls into the middle of the body. You know, if you were naked out in the cold, your blood's going to go into the middle of the body to keep your organs warm. If uh, I'm naked out in the cold, y'all need to put that special uh, jacket on me and in that special rubberized room. Well, you never know. You might have had a wreck, you know. You never know. You never <laughs> yeah. know. Things get stuck in the, you know. Cold, maybe you're still completely cold, but you're wet and freezing in the middle of winter time. You never know. No, that, that stuck is on true. the side of a mountain. Now, but, the, the last one's the best one, though. And another disclaimer is necessary. Lightning never strikes twice in the same place. <clears throat> I'm not going to test that theory. I'm going to take their word for it. Because if I see lightning strike somewhere, I'm not going to walk over there and tempt fate. No. No. I have to agree with you. Um, yeah, we'll just let that one stay where it's at. Yeah. Where's Benjamin Franklin when you need him? Hey, fun fact, though, for a lot of people that may not know, lightning does not come down. It goes up. That's an optical illusion that you're seeing when you, when you see lightning. It starts at the bottom and works its way up. That was not on this know. list, but uh, that's one I that I did not know that. Uh, anytime you get a chance, go on YouTube and look at lightning in slow motion. But why does it, why does it do that? It's an electrical charge that goes into the sky. <clears throat> it just shoots out. But what causes that electrical shot? Because why don't you see it on a sunny day? Wow. I don't know. I I'm going to I'm gonna have to dig deep on that and uh, maybe bring that to a future podcast. Yeah, we'll have to do some homework on that. Yeah. All right, so um, you guys have uh, just witnessed the Rick and Big Show educational hour, and um, <laughs> see, this is why they call it slightly warped kids. Half the time we don't know what the hell we talking about, and the other half something will pop out. Yeah. <laughs> All right, uh, you got anything before we go out? Um, no. Um. I think maybe in the next few weeks, we should probably address this Roe versus Wade thing. Yeah, I was thinking about next week. I didn't want to do it this week. I wanted to keep it light this week because, you know, <laughs> this is this is going to be a touchy thing. Most definitely. Yeah. Maybe we need to invite a couple of females on here just to that get their be perspective. A bad idea. That would not be a bad idea at all. We might want to reach out to some people and see what we can come up with. Yeah. It's definitely worth discussing. All right, gang. Once again, slightly warped. So that's the name. You've you've got the right guys. New name, same great podcast. We're bringing it to you every week, and hopefully, you got some value out of this. 
If you're watching on YouTube, please like, share, subscribe. Uh, no matter what platform that you're listening on, leave a comment. Let us know how we're doing, what you like, what you don't like, what you want to see in the future. We'll try to get it on for you. And uh, that's all for this week. Again, I'm Rick. That's Big Show. Show, as usual, I appreciate you, man. Yes, sir. Thank you so much. And you guys, check us out again next week. Later. Later.